some blessings because it was nice and sunny today. Uh, it was a beautiful day. Um, uh, you know, a lot of things going on and people's live here and there. Uh, Deacon Terry uh, had a home going service for his uncle. Um, you know, things are just going on, but yet God is God and the peace of God and the love of God. And thank God for knowing him. You know, thank God for knowing him, knowing him, his love and, and, uh, uh, and his mercy and his compassion he has for us and to be able to minister that love and compassion towards others. Amen. So let's get ready to study tonight. I pray others are getting on. Um, and we've been talking about focusing. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I believe it's, it's something that we really need to address because sometimes I don't think we even realize when we, we've lost focus. Uh, but that's why we've got to learn how to abide and learn how to dwell, okay? And um, so we talked about focusing because we're chosen. Uh, God has chosen us. That's what we're talking about on Sunday. And um, with that, how do I do that? You know, I, I believe that many times as people begin their walk and they're excited, Mother Irma, they get born again, they're excited you know, things start happening uh, for them in their life, um, you know, coming out of dark places and feeling fresh and feeling new. Uh, but then life continues to happen. You know, the word of God's talking about how the seed can fall on, on, uh, on in thistles where the cares of life begin to steal the word that's in your heart. But, you know, we got to keep the word here in our heart that we don't lose ourselves. And uh, I, I relate that to losing focus, to losing focus. As I heard you all praying, you all talking about studying and getting to know God. And uh, we know God by knowing his word. We got to pick it up and we got to read and we got to pray. And we got to, as I told you all on last week, my heart for you is to Make sure you're pointed in the right direction. And Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 talks about our understanding being enlightened. And uh, the Holy Spirit does that for us. And uh, when we're talking to you on Sunday about being chosen, we got to show up. Uh, we dealt with Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2, presenting ourselves as living sacrifices, you know, and when we think about sacrifice, let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that that's, that's some things that puts people in a quandary sometimes. Um, when we read the scripture, let me do this first. When we read the scripture in Matthew twenty two fourteen, 14, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. And that word call means in, invited, you know, invited, and few accept the invitation. So upon accepting God's salvation, um, we've got to then show up, okay? And what I was sharing with you that I feel obligated, I feel uh, impressed, I feel um, moved with compassion. Uh, concerning the gospel and, and so that others might see and hear it. And so as we get equipped for those things, what does that look like? Again, how do I function as a born again believer? How do I function as a chosen of the Lord? You know, and Paul told us in Romans 12, 1, you know, presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. When you hear that, what do, what do you think about? I'm just trying to set some stage because I really want y'all to teach. I want to know where y'all have been studying that. <laughs> well, Bishop, you know, uh, Sunday, as you were teaching, you were saying, um, because we are chosen and you just said now, you know, we have to show up. We have to show up, but we also another word that can be used right in this right in this in the socket of that is accept mm. we have to accept the okay. call we have mm. to accept that calling sure we can come and we can show up but if we don't accept it we won't be doing any good so when we That's come good. we got to accept that call 
and realize that we are anointed. Mm -hmm. So those things came out, stood out for me because anytime I feel like I have to say something in front of someone or open my mouth, mm -hmm. I've got to know that there's an anointing on me to say what I need to say. That's good. And I've read it in the Bible. I know that I can repeat what I've heard, and been taught and read. So I feel like I'm covered if I open my mouth and say it. So there's an anointing on me to do that when I do it. So I'm just taking it personal right now. Yeah. But I just happen to happen to see that accept. And that just it just fit right in the socket because okay. it's a whole word, but it fits right in there. Yeah. When you hear the word accept, do you also hear responsibility? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And doesn't have to be just, of course. Yes. Yes, you hear that. Certainly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's something that we've got to tie that together, Mother Irma. Mm -hmm. When we accept the salvation of the Lord, it also comes with responsibility. Yes. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it comes with responsibility of having integrity. So mm -hmm. almost like I see your hand, Sister Barbara. So almost like um, if I'm inviting you to a wedding, because when we become the pride of Christ, when mm -hmm. God extends an invitation to us, he's extending that invitation to us to be married. To That's Christ. right. That's right. And That's right. I don't know uh, if, if you've ever paid one. We just had a daughter to get married and Lord have mercy. You got to understand that it's, it's, it's sacrifices. There's cost. There was a cost for this salvation. All right. So if you say you're coming, but then you don't show up, uh, that that there's you know, that's not having integrity. And so when we accept this invitation, we got to be integral. We got to say, you know what? I accept the responsibility that goes along with the accepting this invitation too. And you staying in your vein, Mother Irma. Come on. And and in that ex and accept when you don't come. And we've said we we accepted the responsibility and everything, but when you don't come and you don't show up, now you have you have moved you have shifted some things because someone else had to catch your spot. You mm. Stay in the wind so I can stay where I need to be. But when you when you when you don't come, your plate was made. You had to be that plate had to be paid for. You mm. see what I'm saying? So when you yeah. accept the responsibility and you don't show up. Someone else has to take your slack, and and that responsibility was on you. So it it it, it it's um it's an in, integral thing, you know. We need to show up if we we said we're coming. We need to come if we accept that responsibility. We need to be on top of it. That's excellent. And also oh, adding uh, uh, piggybacking on your thought, and when we recognize that uh, the 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 compound faith that's involved. Uh, where two or three are gathered in his name, he's also in the midst. Uh, the compounding of anointing, you know? So if I don't walk in what I've been called into the place of anointing, where the spirit of the Lord has come upon me, then the presentation of God's glory in the earth is, is not where it should be because we're not showing up. Does that make sense? We're not showing up because I, I, I have something to bring to the table. The Lord chose me. He handpicked me. So therefore, when, when the spirit of the Lord came upon me, he anointed me to be able to share about this good news. Okay. And now I've got to uh, show up and, and present it and all those types of things. And the more of us that are doing that, the more the glory of the Lord is being revealed in the earth. And when we don't show up, then that's when we don't experience and see his glory being manifested. Okay. Yeah, this is good. I love that. I love that. Sister Barbara Dean Deacon Terry. Okay. Um, presenting yourself as a living sacrifice means to me that you give up your fleshly lust and then you start feeding your spiritual lust That's and when good. you start feeding your spiritual lust then you're closer to god 
and doing the things of God. Now, something that really stood out to me Sunday that you said, and ooh, it really touched me was silence is agreement, tolerance is acceptance. Yes. If we only not only have to show up, sometimes we have to speak up. Mm, we have to good. speak up against things that, you know, because if you're just silent, then you're in agreement with whatever's going on around you. Mm-hmm. And, if, and if you're doing that, that's tolerance and you're accepting it. Mm. So if you don't speak up or speak out about it or against it because it's not of God, then you're really not creating yourself as a living sacrifice because you're accepting all the silly things going on around you that's not of God. And that's what I take from it. That's excellent. That's so, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that input. And that's a part of showing up, uh, speaking up. Okay. The scripture tells us to cry loud and spare not. Yeah, we got to open our mouths and to to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Deacon Terry, I love that. Yes, sir. I was uh picking back off what Sister Barbara said about um. Uh, you know, uh, present your body as a living sacrifice. You know, when you when you do that, and uh, you like she said, you give it up what you want to do, and you sacrifice in what God didn't call you to do. And it's a sacrifice. I mean, uh, to to do the work of the ministry, you got to deny the things that you want to do, and 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 once you do that, and start feeding your spirit, man. You said earlier, you're going to be moved with compassion. You're going to be moved with compassion that want to do the work of the ministry. Because uh, with myself, uh, when I feed my spirit, man, I'm moved to serve. I mean, I I look for places to serve. I want to encourage people. I want to love on people. I mean, if I see a need, I want to be a help to that. And, and it's a sacrifice. And I could be doing other stuff, but I don't want to do other stuff. When it's a call for me to serve, that's what I want to do. If okay. God called me to go somewhere and to serve, it's my heart to serve. And it, it might look like you're losing. I might could be making money instead of serving, but I don't worry about that now. My desire is to serve. It ain't it ain't it ain't for me to go out and run behind a dog. It mm. ain't for me to do what I want to do. It's for to do what God done called me to do. Mm-hmm. Like you said, when you when you in God, you be moved to do things, and 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 I mean it's a great feeling. Mm-hmm. I mean it brings joy to me to to go and serve some in a place that 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 um God done called me to serve in, just to do things to help someone mm-hmm. that's a joy to me mm-hmm. and, that, and that, so you painting the picture the sacrificial part of it is is that i could be doing something else to benefit me per se or, or you think it's benefiting you right you know so so doing doing other things with your time putting your mind on other things you know uh, because staying focused is where I put my mind, where I spend my time, what I set my will to, you know, uh, where I give my emotions to, uh, what, where, what, I, what I do with my money. Um, you know, all of those things is, is about sacrifice. Could be doing all of this, could be doing that. But yet, because I move with compassion to see the will of God and this gospel uh, reach people and realize I'm, a, I'm an instrument of that happening. I'm a part of that happening. And, and all of us collectively together do those things. We can see the world be made different, right? Yeah. Other people are doing things and you could be doing that too, but we're not to be conformed to this world, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's good. Presenting yourself. You got to show up. As Mother Irma said, we got to show up. I got to answer the call. I accept the invitation. That invitation also includes some responsibilities. And uh, I want to just read this text. We're going to get into something, but I want to read this because we're talking about, remember we said that 
we, we got to say to God, it's got to be our heart's prayer to restore or to help me maintain uh, the joy of my salvation. Uh, Jesus was talking to the disciples in, in uh, John 15, and we're going to study this. I'm going to teach it on Sunday, but I want to introduce this part to you because he's talking about your joy being made full. In John 15 and 10, let's just start at 10 and 11. He says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Y'all see that? So th this, 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 this joy, the joy of our salvation is, is when we keep his commandments and do the things that he, he reveals and points out to us to be done. Dean Terry, do you, does it bring you joy when you have the opportunity to, to serve? Yes, sir. And I was just thanking Bishop, you know, when you're doing the will of God and, and, and serving, and like I said earlier, you could be doing this, you think you're missing some, but mm. if you serve and do what God tell you to do, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and he will add things to you. Mm -hmm. That's the way I live my life now. I used to then live it like that. I had to go set up, I had to sell, I had to do this, I had to do that, but I learned. Okay. I learned over the process that God grew me. I learned to to uh, seek God first. Serve, you know. You say you serve your way to destiny. Mm -hmm. and I've just been seeing things. Just, I mean, things come to me now. I don't have okay. to work hard. I get my proper rest, <laughs> and, and I serve my wife. I serve my children. I serve come my on. children. And I serve other people, and God just adds to me. I mean, mm. it looks like I've got more increase on my life now since I'm operating that way than I was when I was trying to. I mean, I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning trying to go make a dollar. I don't, I don't do that no more. Okay, I, I was wearing my body out. I couldn't function. I couldn't. I couldn't spend time with God, and and I see the results now, the way I'm living now, then the results I got back when I was doing all of that. I was just wearing myself out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get nowhere, but now I got so much peace <laughs> and, and my body is rested up. And, yeah. you know, it's just a, just a good feeling, but you have to learn to do that. Yeah. You got to serve your way to destiny. You can't, you can't do what you want to do. You got to show up. Like, you know, like right here, I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be on here at six thirty. When you uh -huh. get out, I'm gonna be on, cause I know God got a word for me. Mm. I know God done spoke to you, and and it's for all of us. And I don't want to miss nothing God got for me. I mm. want every instruction that God want to give me, and I'm gonna be in obedience to them instructions. Glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see the results of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every, well, this day, is... every day I see results every day. Like you said, Sunday, uh, you got to you got to see God every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see God every day. Every mm -hmm. day I'm grateful. Every day I see God in my life. It ain't yeah. a day that I don't see God. It ain't a day that I'm saying negative stuff and 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 what is this and what is that. I mean, them days is behind me now. <laughs> So, so you can see that all things are working together for good now. Yes, sir. For those that love God and are the called according to what? His purpose. Yes, sir. Right? Amen. This is excellent. And I just want to say, I see your hand, Mother Irma. I, I, I seen you and this, this warmed my heart. I told you this earlier today, how you were able, you were with your granddaughters. You taking your granddaughters to their little prom to their little, their little, um, this wasn't a prom, but a, 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 
a dance. What was it? Yeah, it was a dance, a Cinderella ball. A Cinderella ball. They got on their little little dresses and their and their little little shoes and they hair made up all pretty and they with their papa. They yeah. with their granddaddy and they taking pictures. See, those things are priceless. Yeah, yeah. But but if your mind is all over the place, man, people people are missing out and don't understand and what you how you served and ministered to your grandbabies. Man, they'll never forget that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. They'll never ever forget that. They'll never forget that. Amen. Amen. Come on, Mother Irma. Um, in this passage, Bishop, you know, it also spoke about love. Uh, love is spoken in here a couple of three times even. And we know that God's commandments are not grievous to us. Come on. Uh, did not put them there for us to be hurt or to be upset when we have to do it. You know, he, he gave us those things out of love. His commandments were given in love and we need to receive them in love. So when we respond and when we, when we act, when we do the things that we need to do, we have to remember the father loves us. Mm-hmm. He loves us and he wants to show us love, but, but when we show it back to him, then he loves us even the more. Mm-hmm. We can't love God. No, we, we can't. can't love him. Jesus, uh, we need to follow his instructions, his directions and yeah. everything. So I was just looking at, as you were reading that, I was just noticing that the word love stepped up, uh, you know, showed up mm-hmm. and uh, it's all about God loving us and that we need to in return, love him back and do what he asked us to do. That's just love of a father, loving the father. Yeah. And, and we, we keep his commandments, follow his instructions because we have comprehended his love for us and we do it out of out of loving him back. You know, we do this. We don't feel that it's it's rules and regulations and that we're losing out on anything. As Deacon Terry said, we're gaining. He talked about as he learned how to 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 do what God wants him to do first. He feels he's in better place he's ever been in his life. And so the enemy will tell you that you're losing out. And somebody that doesn't know God will tell you that, but you're gaining. Jesus said it like this in the scriptures. If you lose your life, you'll find it. What he's talking about, finding the life that God has for you, the Zoe life, the life that God intended. And, And we do that as we follow his instructions, okay? Learning his ways, doing his will, operating in his love. Okay, allowing him to love us. And, and you know, some of us, and, and some can even admit it. You ever met somebody that, that they make it hard for you to love them? They make it hard for you to love them because they're just closed off. Their heart is cold. Their heart is hard. And, and you know, some people even sabotage uh, relationships because moment they start feeling any type of thing, they sabotage it, they do something, they, they, they act out or whatever it may be. Now we got to continue in love because that's what God did for us. You understand what I'm saying? But we don't want God to, to feel like, you know, he's got to keep on and keep on. We ought to, we ought to just go on and submit and surrender. Throw your hands in the air. Amen. <laughs> Throw your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender. I submit. Not my will, but thy will be done, God. I know that you have your best interest for me at heart, God, and I'm going to do things your way. Amen. And that's when we begin abiding in that love. That word abide means to remain, to dwell, to continue in. Okay, who doesn't want to feel loved every day? I know I do. I love experiencing the love of God. Amen. And you know what? As I'm walking in the love of God, you know what I get a chance to do? Share that love with other people. Amen. A phone call. Thank you. Someone uh, opening the door for someone as you're going to the store, going into a building saying nice, saying hello to someone, smiling at someone. 
I know we've had to wear these old funny masks. Sometimes I take my mask off just so I can smile at somebody. I mean, so they can see I'm smiling at them. Amen. You know, a little child, take it off and just smile at them. And you see little kids, they wave back at you and they smile. Amen. Just making a difference wherever you go, being light, being soft, walking in that love of God. Isn't that what the world needs? More love? Yeah, the love is a force. That's what that's what my, I was sitting down talking with my grandmother. She said, baby, do you think if, if we could just love better, this world would be different? I said, Grandmama, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that with my whole heart. And that's what she said. She'd get us a one-on-one -on -one session. She said, y'all love one another. That's what she tell every one of us. If she hadn't told us in a group, she'd tell us that individually. She always tell me that. Y'all keep loving each other. Y'all love each other, okay? Amen. And so that's got to be the message. That's the message of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, okay? And this isn't just, just breathing. As I said, I don't know if I said this Sunday or last week, this ain't just being breath and britches and eating up all the groceries and all that. No, this is being... being uh, having value, adding value. When you walk in the room, people are glad to see you. Amen. You add value. Peace walked in the room. Joy walked in the room. Love walked in the room. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listen, the anointing walked in the room. Amen. So if there happens to be a need, we can pray about it. Amen. We can share the wisdom of God about it. Isn't that powerful? That's showing up. That's that's how we how we function in, in this chosen life that he has given to us. Okay. Anybody else? Questions, comments? We want to know how this. How, what does this look like? How do we do this? How do we do this? Let me ask y'all this question. Do you feel moved with compassion towards humanity? Move with compassion. When you see things, when you hear things, does it, does, it, does it touch your heart to where you want to do something about it? Tanisha said, yes, yeah, she's probably at work. Amen. Yeah. Okay. That's yes, Bishop. It breaks my heart when I see some things. Yes. Okay. And so when he's enlightening our understanding, he allows us to see why certain things are happening. You know, and then when he uh, unlocks the mysteries of God to us, as I read to you, I think it's Ephesians chapter one. Let's, let's go to Ephesians chapter one. Because I want to give you scripture. I'm not, I'm not, this isn't my philosophies or anything. I'm giving you the word of God. Okay. Ephesians chapter one and three. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So when we realize that we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, that's where we can manifest heaven on earth. Let his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that what Jesus told us in Matthew 6? That should be our prayer, right? That's the Lord's prayer. And he tells us to pray that. So we have that. So we know these things, Mother Irma. There's no problem for us to show up. There's no problem for us to give it out. Like you said, I know when I open my mouth, 
and I, I'm concerned about something and I know what the word of God says about it. I know how God feels about that. When I say these things out of my mouth, when I extend my hand, when I give the hug, uh, when, I, when I'm not silent, Sister Barbara, and when I'm not tolerating a thing, I know that the anointing is upon the words I'm about to speak because I've been moved with compassion. Okay, I'm not offended. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, what's the word say it? I'm not even so angry about it. I'm moved with compassion so that I might do be able to do something about it. Right. So if I'm confident in this and I know that because he chose me, I didn't choose myself, he chose me, I'm anointed because the spirit of the Lord has come upon me, right? And the anointing destroys yokes. The anointing sets the captives free. The anointing uh, uh, produces uh, heaven on earth, okay? So now he says, according as he have chosen us, you see that word chosen again? In verse four, Ephesians 1, 4. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in what? There's that word, Mother Irma, in love. There's that word love again. It's that word love again, Mom. There's that word love, okay? Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to, uh, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So this is about God's will towards us. All right. He said, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, and whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So when we know these things, it ought to cause us to have some humility. It ought to cause us to say, God, you've been merciful to us. You chose me in spite of me, and this is what you wanted to do for me and with me, so I accept the invitation. You thought enough about me to, to, to give your son, and by his blood, I'm forgiven, and I'm redeemed, and I'm reconciled back to you. That's why it says in Romans 12 and 1, uh, uh, present yourself as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, for this is your reasonable service. That's the least you could do in showing appreciation to what God has done for you. I don't know if you've ever been in a dark place or you've never been uh, in a low, low state in life, but when God chooses you and he redeems you and restores you and you have some joy again, you have some peace again, come on now, you're able to love yourself and love others again. Man, there is no greater thing in life than for that to transpire. The least I could do is serve him. The least I could do, amen, is, is, is sacrifice some things that I might want to do for what he wants to do and what he needs. Listen, what he needs done, okay? He did for me what I needed. Now I can do for him what he needs done. He needs a people that will speak up. He needs a people that will show up. He needs a people that's not ashamed of him. Amen. That are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Is that all right? Amen. Come on. So I wanted to get to the place where it says, mm, here it is. Go down to verse 17. that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of the Lord, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and that is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Listen at this, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and that put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over the thing, all things to the church. Okay. So the enlightening of our understanding allows us to be able to speak to things because this is his will. He wants mankind to know his love, to understand his love, okay? That they might receive what you have received. We believe that. So when we're being moved with compassion, I want y'all to know that that's an unctioning of God. That is how you function. There's an unction. That's an unction of the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Okay? Please don't ignore it. Yes, Mother Irma. Bishop, when you're moved with compassion, you you can't ignore that. That that okay. love comes up in your in your belly. You can't, that's what moves you. It's the love that moves you. That's the, that's the compassion you're feeling. It's the love. That's that's the care that you have for another human being. And you, mm. you there's no way to miss it. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. But it's miss it. When that when that feeling comes up and you have compassion for another human being, my goodness life, you you can't miss that. You know that's God. You didn't do that yourself. Okay. It doesn't even feel like it came out of yourself. You know that you know that it, it's something special. Oh my God, you know it's something special. So let me let me trouble y'all a minute and ask y'all this question. Do you all think this compassion is missing? Compassion towards others is 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 not at, in the place it should be today. Yes, it's missing. It's missing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And here's another thing. I'm I'm giving y'all a diagnosis, a diagnostic test right now. So why do you all think that compassion is missing in people's lives? Compassion towards others, love towards others. Why do you think it's missing? Because they don't know Christ. Okay. Lack of relationship. A lot of it is because they don't know Christ. Lack of relationship, uh, lack of uh, getting to know Christ and studying okay. the word. Mm. And, you know, God. The reason God sent his son Jesus is because man wouldn't submit to him and come unto him like he wanted them to. So he sent his son into the world to show us how to live and to live according to God's will and his purpose. And he had to send his son down here to do. God came in the flesh to show us how to live. And he sent Jesus for that to teach us and to teach the disciples so they can go and teach and teach and teach and preach the gospel so we could learn of spirit and truth and God's mysteries. And, and that's the reason he sent Jesus because man just wouldn't submit unto him like he wanted them to before Christ. That's, okay. my, that's what I think. And then, you know, Christ uh, went on the cross for all of our sins, but I was reading something here where it says that Believers were made known to believers by the Lord's showing to them the mystery of his sovereign will and the method of redemption and salvation. But these, but these, um, uh, oh, sorry, wait a minute. But these must have been forever hidden from us. If God had made them known to us by his written word, preached gospel and spirit of truth, Christ united the two differing parties, God and man in his own person and satisfied the wrong which caused the separation in the first place. Mm -hmm. This is what I was reading as I was reading the word, you mm -hmm. know, so he wrought by his spirit, those graces of love, whereby we 
are, are made one with God and among ourselves, he dispenses all his blessings according to his good pleasure, his divine teaching to whom he pleased to see the glory of those truths which others were left to blaspheme. So Christ came to unite us with God. And that's the message. And so that, People got to realize that, that there's yes, a sir. disconnect. People are disconnected from God and they're creating their own righteousness. And we're supposed to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, isn't that right? That's what the word of God tells Amen. us. Amen, amen. But as you said, Sister Barbara, if we're not, as those that have been called and chosen of God, accepted the invitation, accepted the salvation, if we don't learn these things and know these things and teach these things, how are other people going to know? Does that make sense? And that's, that's the responsibility that we have. And that's why you'll hear me say, teaching to teach to teach. That's why you hear me say your life has to preach. That doesn't mean you have to stand behind no pulpit. It doesn't mean that you're a pastor. It doesn't mean any of that. But all of us have to share the good news of, of Christ's coming, what he did for us, that people are not suffering needlessly, angry, addicted, not loving one another, uh, not having wholesome environments. You understand what I'm saying? Society, immoral, unethical, you know, loving themselves more than they care about anybody else. The Bible tells us to, to uh, think more highly of others than you think of your own self. Okay, that's having compassion towards someone else. That's what makes you just simple things, opening a door for someone, okay? Saying, excuse me, uh, smiling at someone, uh, saying, being kind, with love and kindness have I drawn me. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, not taking advantage of someone that's in a, at a disadvantage. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, in this world, does that every day. They take advantage of the disadvantaged. Okay. And, and that's not compassion. And they'll do it for a dollar, Deacon Terry. They'll do it for the dollar, for a dollar. Okay. Greed. Uh, this, this inflation is greed. It's greed. We don't have to have inflation right now. People are, are opportunists. They're saying you can't get it, so I'm going to make the price real high, so I'm going I'm to make all the money that I want right now. Not thinking that people are challenged. Pe people are dealing with a whole lot of different things, but yet you want to be greedy, raise your prices real high, you know, take advantage of, 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 of someone that, that is this and any other. And, and it's all in the right perspective. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? It's all in the right perspective. I'm not, I'm not talking about just doing business and things that nature and doing business the right way. I'm talking about people that are, that are affecting uh, uh, people's lives in ways that is just based on greed. Just based on greed. Not having compassion towards others. I don't know how I got down that trail. But yes, my um, I just, um, I'm going to ease back up the, up the trail just a minute. Um, when we were talking about how, you know, where, you know, how we miss the mark sometimes about the world, the world stage is, is, is like a flashing light right now. Okay. Everything is so animated and so filtered and so bright. And so it's, it's absolutely competing with God. Yeah. And the, Satan is the prince of the air. Mm -hmm. Then his element, mm -hmm. and he's he with God, even though we know he we know he does not win. But in the meantime, what the world is doing is like flashing lights. It's mm -hmm. just so much attention to everything in the world. It is so much going on right now. I'm telling you the truth. You you don't even know which way to start going to look at anything. Because everything is so over the, over the top, over yeah. the, over the top. And for people that are really living life every day and dealing with everyday crisis or everyday 
uh, even everyday blessings. Just the cares it, of life, yeah. It can get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It can become overwhelming. And so uh, human humans right need right now need some compassion. We're in we're in we're in a we're in a strange place right now. A lot of people just don't know how to how to get out of it and how to walk away from it because they're entangled, you yeah. know, right now. And this awesome. is what and this is what we got to do. The word of God. Excellent point, Mother Irma. That's why we got to stay focused. If we lose our focus, what hope do they have? If we're not sound, don't have sound doctrine and sound faith, what hope do they, do they have? And the sacrifices we make is, is that, yes, the world yeah. makes things attractive, but because we understand we have a responsibility yes. and we understand what happens to people's lives when they get drawn away by those types of things, they disconnect yeah. from God, disconnect from his will, his ways, his morals, yeah. his moral excellence, yeah. his love, all those types of things. And now you're driven by greed and yeah. competition yeah. and all those types of things. That's yeah. covetousness. Yeah. So until you come to the place of being content and your salvation, the joy of your salvation is restored. That is what gets you. Yes, remember I taught you all that the world makes things attractive. But the Bible says that nothing shall be able to the, compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Nothing shall be able to compare to it. Are you understanding? You couldn't, you couldn't give Deacon Terry, he wouldn't take nothing for where he is right now in life. Are you understanding? But it was a process. He had to stay focused long enough till he broke out from what once had a hold to him, what once, you use the word this, Mother Irma, what had him entangled until as he abided in the word and he allowed the word to abide in him, he came out of all of those entanglements. And now he's on the other side of seeing the glory of the Lord. And so now the glory of the Lord being revealed upon him, it brings him the smile, the peace, the health, the, the joy, and sharing it with others in that type of way. That's for all of us. All of you are walking in those things, okay? So we can't lose focus and we cannot allow uh, uh, the world to, um, what I wanna say, cause us to be silent or to cause us to tolerate. We still have to proclaim the gospel. We gotta proclaim it, we got to live it, okay? Yeah, and all these things. So that is of a truth, Mother Irma, what you said. That is why it's so important for the saints to stay focused. And my, my, my heart, one of the reasons why I'm seeing is because I'm seeing the saints of God, uh, worship leaders in, in, in club settings on Saturday night and standing in the pulpit leading people in worship on Sunday morning. And I'm seeing many of the saints in the place where the worship leaders is on Saturdays that that's doing things in a way that, listen, your gift, sacrifice those things and allow the glory of the Lord to be upon your gift that it can take people in the presence of God so that yokes can be destroyed, burdens can be removed, captives being set free. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. But I'm seeing the, 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 the saints being lured away. And man, it was crowded. It's crowded, man. People in there hollering. They, they juking and doing all this type of thing. And I'm like, that's the worship leader. And then they got all the, the church's musicians in there playing in the club. Come on. I say, guys, you're losing focus. Focus is being lost. Exactly what you said, Mother Irma. And this ain't old school. This ain't because I'm old. This is because when you see what's going on in society, you've got to believe and trust that the ways of God Okay, is the answer and is a solution 
to all the hurt and the harm and the pain that's going on in people's life. Amen. Yeah. We have to believe that, Deacon Terry. I believe that the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. I believe that we've been called to holiness. Okay. And I have fun. I wear my alligator shoes. I get sharp. Amen. I eat good. I go places and I enjoy myself, but I still operate in reverence to God. Does that make sense? Amen. In reverence to God. So I, I don't live a dull life. Amen. Glory to God. Man, I done been in different countries and places I never thought I'd be able to go. Serving, meeting people I never thought I'd be able to meet, doing things I never thought I'd be able to do. My life ain't dull. It ain't boring in one moment. Okay. And I still look good. I ain't wore out and I ain't tired. Is that okay? Amen. I'm wiser now. Amen. I ain't 25. I don't, I don't try to do what 25 year old do. Come on, but I ain't tired. I'm ready to go. Let's get it cracking. Amen. Let's do some things. Sister Barbara, you got your hand up. Come we're talking about what this looked like. Yes, sir. I, as the chosen of God. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I, I agree with you, Mother Irma. I agree that this flashing a lot of stuff. I'm gonna tell you, I've never seen the world like this. You see things now that we never even thought about doing and people doing and this is my thing if the saints are in the clubs doing what you said bishop what are they what are they teaching their children i worry about the children the next generation coming up that's yeah. who i pray for because what are they getting yeah what are they learning from their parents from yeah. this world when we was kids we didn't see stuff like this we didn't grow up if you did something wrong your grandmama will pop you in your mouth and make you sit down. These kids nowadays get away with everything. All they know is video games. There's no structure in the homes. You know, what are they teaching our babies? And that's what I worry about. The babies coming up. The young yeah. generation. What have they yeah. got to fall back on? And that's, and that's what that's I'm saying. Prayer. I pray for the young generation. Yeah. And, and we've got to be restorers of path to dwell in. Okay, we got to be restored the path, restores the path to dwell in, as it says in Isaiah 58, and repairs of the breach. Okay, we have to do that. We've got to try to get all that can be, uh, what I want to say, uh, rescued that our grandparents and parents right now, okay, that we begin that building that, that momentum towards creating wholesome environments again. I was talking to my wife earlier today and she's telling me she works with Job Corps, you know, that a young teenage girl, um, you know, was opening her heart up to her and just saying, you know, Miss T, the reason why we behave like this is because we don't feel our mother and our grandmother love us. This is what they're saying. I don't feel, I don't feel my mother or my grandmother loves me. That's why I act the way that I do. That's why I'm here. Now you're hearing this out of these babies. These babies are crying out. Oh my, yes. Yes. Oh. They're crying out. Okay. They're crying out. And I'm gonna tell you that's not every instant. I'm just telling you that's what that was one. And that touched my heart. I was moved with compassion about by that. You know, that's why I'll keep on teaching. That's why I tell y'all, teach to teach to teach. That's why I tell y'all, talk to your family members, talk to your friends, talk to your coworkers, have conversations, amen, that's going to birth some new seasons. You know, we got to consider our ways, okay? We can't have a plague and a famine. That means that we in trouble, y'all. They're talking about supply shortages. Then they got, you know, waves of, of pandemic sickness and disease going on. You got the flu, COVID, uh, and all this other stuff going on all at the same time. Hospitals overwhelmed. Come on now, overwhelmed and all this. Other. Man, that, that, that's, that's a plague. And somebody got to say, we got to consider our ways. We got to consider our ways. 
okay? Murders on the all-time high, drug addictions. Hmm? Do you know that's a cry for help? I said that's a cry for help. And when we enlighten our understanding, the Holy Spirit, I told y'all to be discerning. I want everybody praying for the gift of discernment. Matter of fact, I release it under you even now in Jesus' name, stirring up the gift of God on the inside of you. You're born again. It's a gift of the Spirit. So receive it now in Jesus' name, the gift of discernment. That where we are and who we're in the midst of, we're able to discern what's really going on. Okay? Like Jesus did with the woman at the well. He discerned what was really going on. He didn't buy into traditions. He didn't buy into anything. He discerned what was really going on. You know what happened? That woman at the well got born again. He said, you'll never thirst again. You'll never hurt like that. You'll never resort to those things anymore. And that woman went back into that city and said, I have met a man that you need to meet. That needs to be us. We know how to, how to have joy. We know how to live in peace. We, we know how to walk in love now. You're looking for love in all the wrong places, baby. Come on, young man, you're looking for attention. Come on, you're angry. You don't have to be angry anymore. Okay, you don't have to be angry anymore. You don't have to hurt anymore. Is this good? You got the goods. But silence is agreement. Okay, and tolerance is acceptance. So my prayer is that we all move with compassion that an unction of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You know what he told the disciples? Don't take no personal, no script. He says, when you come upon that situation, my Holy Spirit is going to tell you what you need to know and tell you what you need to do. We just have to show up. We got to know this is our responsibility. This is what he saved me to do. This is my purpose in life. Come on now. This is what I need to be doing. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to work and I'll make money, but I'm there. I'm in that workplace so that souls can be saved, that people can be healed, people can be delivered. Amen. Me getting a paycheck is just a, just a blessing. It's just a, on the top, but I'm really there for the work of the ministry. That's what I'm really there for. You can tell you, that's what you're really setting up for. Amen. That you might see and observe and pray and share and share the love of Christ and do good. You know what? And God blesses you. Amen. He can bless you in one hour, what you used to spend all week trying to make. Just to tell you, I appreciate you. I appreciate you praying for that young man. I appreciate you going over there. And you didn't set up yesterday, but you set up today. And I'm going to let you make in two hours what you usually make in 16. Come on. Amen. But we got to stay focused. Got to stay focused. I tell you what also happens. You get anointed in them places. You get anointed in them places, man. You be whistling while you work. You be like, oh, it's time to go. Lord, have mercy. Ooh. The spirit of the Lord comes upon you and I'm a hush. Oh, yes, ma'am. Let's see. Tanisha, and then we're going to hear from Sister Barbara. Tanisha, you raise your hand. It's, and like Mother said, the spirit of the Lord comes upon you. And it's hard for a lot of people right now for the spirit of the Lord to come upon them because when I was growing up with my grandmother, my mother, my aunts and uncles, to be humble was taught to us. You know, to love everyone was taught to us respect was taught to us mm -hmm. and all of the things the key words that were precious to us that we cherished that we acted out in our daily lives mm -hmm. those are now looked at as a shun mm. nobody wants to be humble because to be humble means you're not going to be seen 
Mm. To be humble, you're not going to be heard. If I'm humble, that means I'm not going to be there first. It's not going to be about me. Mm. When the truth is it's not about you in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, that is, humility is something that is important for us to have, not for us to just be thinking that we're worthless and so lowly. Yeah. But that's how God speaks to us concerning ourselves and to other people. Like you said, mm-hmm. us to have empathy. And right now it's hard for people to have empathy or to show it because they're not taught that. Mm. You know, now you go to church and church is, it's like going to a Broadway play. Mm. You know, it's a pageantry. It's a mm. show. Mm. It's not like what it used to be. Once we walked out the door, our elders and those who were seasoned were living exactly what was being preached, you know, living what was being taught. Mm-hmm. So that's why you have, and I mean, it's it's easy and it's seductive to be in the club because I used to go to the club when I was in the state. I mean, I went there. It's easy and it's seductive to go to church the next day because mm-hmm. you have no accountability. Mm-hmm. There's no one that's holding you accountable. There's no one there that is humble enough to have some discernment to say, your spirit ain't right. What was you last night? Mm. Mm. so if you don't have anyone there with wisdom and humility and discernment any of those fruits of the spirit that can help you touch someone else that's why they coming in and no one's holding them accountable just as long as you're there Mm. well you got to be there because we got to have this we got to have this we got to have that you just got to be there they don't care what your spirit like as long as you can smile and usher the people to the seat. Uh-oh. You know, they care They care about their bodies being there, but they don't care about what's in their bodies. Okay. How they're living in their bodies. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes, that makes a whole lot of sense. I made mention of that. Uh, you know, we, we can Amen. have more concern yes. for, for, you know, the, 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 um, more focus on the place and what goes on in the place than the people. Okay. Church is not a place it's a people. And so when we lose heart and compassion towards people and all we want to do is just pull off our event, basically, then we have a diminish in what you're talking about, Tanisha, you know, humility is the first of the virtues. And so now we're talking about a people who hadn't learned Christ. That is why we're encouraging you to teach, to teach, to teach, okay? And have conversations and let people know, you know, we're supposed to be people that live in holiness. We've been called. The one that called us is holy and we've been called to holiness. What does that mean? Being reverential, have a reverential fear of God. We got to work out our salvation. We're supposed to be people that operate in humility. We're supposed to have compassion toward others. We're supposed to have humility. We're supposed to tell people the truth in love. You understand what I'm saying? We got to show people the way. When the disciples asked him, how, what's the way? He said, I am the way. I am the way. Okay. And he said, if you don't believe me, just watch me. And that's what Tanisha said. Now, what we're sharing with you, and what we're teaching you, we're living this too. So you can watch my life. If you have questions, amen, I can answer you to why I live my life this way, why my life is this way, why I have this joy, why I have this peace, why I can speak to the things that is, is, is uh, uh, what I want to say, deceiving you, okay, or has your attention. We had to get back to being single-eyed. Okay, single eye. That's why I said we laser focused. Okay, we're laser focused. Amen. This is good. This is good. Thank you, Tanisha. That is such a truth. That is such a truth. Okay. Sister Barbara, did you have your hand up? Yes, sir. I I, I wanted to touch on what Tanisha said too, but uh, humility. And another thing lacking now is respect. People don't have respect anymore. Like when we were coming up, it was yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And you never did say, yeah, ma, 
Yes, ma- no, ma. If you did, you got your little jaw slapped. So the respect <laughs> is gone. Even the disciples in the Bible. Yes, master. What would you have me do, Lord? You know, mm-hmm. that's just respect. Even when I talk to you, Bishop, and you say something to me, I say, yes, sir, because that's mm-hmm. just respect for you. Mm-hmm. And see, all the respect is gone. There's no respect anymore. And I just wanted yeah. to say that. That's all. That's a good point. What's what's why is that? Why has that happened? Separation from God. Okay. Because you know Jesus, he always honored his father. I only came to do the will of my father who sent me. I'll only say what the father has said. You, you understand? He always honored his father. The scripture says that we'll honor his son. The father will honor us. The father will bless you. Amen. Yeah, that's what the word of God tells us. So we got to get back to the basics. Teaching and preaching, living this gospel, having conversations. Okay. Uh, When we, when we uh, are in environments that the conversation is off, uh, the, the environment is not wholesome and God will give you wisdom. You've seen that, the, that the spirit of wisdom will come upon you on how to address those things. We don't have to be, be, uh, uh, all self-righteous and all those types. No, God will give you wisdom. If you just move with compassion, does that make sense? If you really care, you will pray, you will intercede. Okay, you may not be able to say nothing in that second or that moment, but you can if if you if you just be quiet for a minute and say, Lord, what do I need to say? What do I need to do about this? Man, he can drop that on you, okay, instantly. You believe that? Okay. And so that's why I ask, are, are we are we move with compassion? Okay. And 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 it has compassion lost. Or is it is it not where it should be, where society is concerned? Okay. And when you move with compassion, what happens is, as a as a saint, you begin to draw on the anointing. Does that make sense? You begin to draw on the anointing. Okay. That's the work of the ministry. Tanisha alluded to pageantry. You see, the kingdom of entertainment, the, 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 uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, who was saying that? That was Mother Irma. When you're saying it made it so, so flashy, so all of this. See, it come in and it began to influence the church. Now the church want to have all of this, this flashy and all those types of things and forgetting about what the work of the ministry truly is. Okay. And that is why as your shepherd and me obeying what the instructions was as this grace has been upon my life is to equip you for the work of the ministry. That's why we're talking about how you move with compassion. Okay. See, when you move with compassion, it will cause you to study. When you not move with compassion about uh, doing what Jesus came in the world to do, that no one is lost, that all will be saved, to, to cause them to be whole, to destroy all the works of the enemy. Okay, when you see the work of the enemy, it will move you to compassion, to study, to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing. Come on now, the word of truth. Amen? See, that's how that happens. But when you're not moved with compassion, you won't study. Oh, come on now. Oh, my. So that being moved with compassion will move you to study. It will move you to a place of prayer. Y'all believe that? Yes, sir. Because it used to be when you wanted to 
be married or court or you were carrying a child, women sought out that thing. You, you know, men did too. Like you did your research. You mm. worked on it. You had enough compassion and wow, I, I want to be this or I'm carrying this or, you know, it was a drive and a passion for that. Mm-hmm. But That's- that drive and passion is not imparted in people. Mm. That's why marriage is a marriage. It's a it's a piece of paper. That's why a child, everybody having kids, kids ain't important, you know. Mm. Um living a a good life mm-hmm. instead of just living is not important. Mm. Just live. It don't matter how you live, just just live. Right. Mm. So that's the deception of the enemy. Right? That's the influence of the world, right? Yes, and that's, that's why we live under the divine guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that is why we have to evangelize even the body of Christ. Those who have confessed Christ, we got to make sure they haven't lost themselves, that they haven't lost their focus. OK, and that we are being equipped. We're, we're, we're the chosen of God, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. We've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light that we might show forth the praises. And that's not the praise that we were, we were uh, uh, initially taught in church. It's not lifting your hands. It's not shouting. It's not running around the building. It's not somebody playing the drums and, and us dancing and, and those types of things, high-fiving your neighbor. That's not the praise. The praises that is described in 1 Peter 2 and 9 is the virtues and the moral excellence of God. That's what we're supposed to be demonstrating as a people that are chosen. Focus, you are chosen. And when you know that that's what I should be focusing on, I won't be attracted by the bright lights and the flashiness and the things that come to present it to me to the lust of my flesh, the lust of my eyes and the pride of life. I'll be working out my soul salvation. I'll continue to say unto the Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Salvation. I'm not going to be lured off. I'm not going to be lured away. God, I accept this empathy. I accept this responsibility, God. You chose me. You could have left me where I was, but you didn't. I should have died, but I didn't. I should be out of my mind, but I didn't. I could be still addicted, but I'm not. God, you chose me. You rescued me. So, Lord, the least I can do is to serve you with gladness. Amen and to present myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, God. I can focus. I can function how you need me to function and I can finish my course. I can get everything done that you set me in the earth to get done. If you call me to the nations, I'll go to the nations. You call me to minister to the homeless, I'll minister to them. You call me to minister to the brokenhearted, I'm going to minister to the brokenhearted. God, if you call me, Lord God, to, to raise a family, I'm going to raise a family, God, regardless of how I feel, what I think, God. I'm going to be holy. I'm going to be righteous. I'm going to do the right thing. Come on out. See, we got to talk to these young men. Listen, you got that young lady present. Do the right thing. Swear to your own hurt. Come on now. We're not singing the old Negro spiritual. Uh, I, I'm raising a fatherless child. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Come on now. Are we good? Yeah. So focusing, we're, we're chosen. And when we understand these things, and listen, y'all got to teach these things that you're coming. You guys are amazing. You, you got to share these truths conversations okay and i i don't know what every conversation is going to sound like but open your heart up to the holy spirit he'll give you the right conversation okay and you got enough words on you see the sower sold the word you got enough words sown on the inside of you that you're more equipped than you think you are And the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. 
He will always lead you and guide you to the truth. What truth am I talking about? The truth that will free people. It'll free you first, and then it'll free others. He'll always lead and guide you into the truth. Come on now. And the Holy Spirit is the anointing of God, Minister Deborah. He'll always lead you, always guide you, always bring all things to remembrance. You are anointed. Do you hear me? You guys are anointed. You know why I know you're anointed? Because of the seed of the word has been sown in you. I've been present. I know what the Holy Spirit has shared with us. I know what the Holy Spirit has taught us. And sometimes even when we wouldn't good stewards over it, it still got sold in you. Glory to God. It still got sold in you. I mean, you might not have gave much attention to it, but it still was sown. Glory to God. It was still sown. What I want you to do is be moved with compassion that you will know that you got a hold to the true riches of God. You have the solution in your heart and in your hands and in your mind. Praise God. And if we'll focus and keep the main thing, the main thing, no matter where we are, we begin seeing the glory of the Lord reveal. Amen. Show forth his marvelous light. Praise God. Pastor Sam and then Sister Barbara, see your hands. So Bishop, one thing that I want to share, uh, piggyback off of uh, Tanisha and some of the others as well. Uh, they were talking about the, uh, lack of respect and honor. I would say, I think a lot of that is due to lack of value. Uh, There's not enough value toward the word of God. It's not enough value toward God himself. And then people don't have value in themselves. Yeah. I think that's another thing that we need to be pointed out. Uh, we may, I think we need to start uh, sharing with people about they are valuable people so they can make uh, more conscious decisions in with different things in their lives because they don't know their value. Yeah. And, and one of the things we, we got to make sure, I agree with you 100% Pastor Sam, they need to know they need to get born again because they're not going to be able to see clearly. They're gonna, still going to be blinded. Okay. And they need to get born again. And we've got to make the gospel attractive. Okay. The saints of God got to show them that don't value this gospel. Why they need to value it. By giving them the solutions to what they are in quest of. They want peace or they need love. Let me show you. Let me, let me, let me share with you and help you to begin comprehending the love that God has for you. Like you talk about their value. Amen. When we can point to them by the word of God and trusting the Holy Spirit that ministers to them, that do you, do you know God's love for you? Let me show you God's love for you in this. Let me show you God's word for you in this. You know, do, can you admit that, that you haven't done right all the time? You know, you, you, you've made some mistakes and, and they may not even be able to relate to the word, but they know they mistreated somebody. They know they did some things wrong because the spirit of God is in everybody. But the consciousness of him has to be reconnected and awakened. OK, and when we start holding people accountable to their behaviors and not allowing them to just continue in their behaviors, it allows them to have a conviction not condemnation, but a conviction about their behavior. And people that are, are operating, amen, uh, outside of what God knows is right, they have some conviction because God put that in everybody. Everybody has a measure of faith in them to confess Christ. He given unto everyone a measure of faith. So that means that there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a uh, a, a component of conviction on the inside. But when the world glorifies sin, because the saints won't speak against sin 
and unrighteousness and immorality and unethical behavior, then it doesn't allow people to be convicted because the world will celebrate immorality. It'll celebrate unethical behavior. It'll celebrate a lack of compassion towards someone else. I mean, they got the all, they got the, 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 the hater club. You know, you get points, you get likes for speaking uh, uh, ill will towards other people. Does that make sense? And so, Pastor Sam, I agree with you 100%. We've got to make this gospel relevant and attractive. And we got to get to them, deal with the poverty that is in their spirit. They're poor in spirit. They lack understanding and revelation concerning God's love, God's grace, okay, God's truth. And so we have to show forth, okay, this marvelous light. in this moral excellence. Anyone else? Boy, we gotta get out of here. Woo, this has been good. Anyone else? I thought Barbara had her hand up, but I think she lost her connection. Amen, well, come on, let's clap our hands. Let's give God a hand of praise. Who we're chosen, we're chosen. How do we function as the chosen of God? Showing forth his praises. Pray about that for me, okay? Allow God to, to move you with compassion towards uh, this time that we're living in, the generations that are in the earth, the lack that is in the earth, okay? And know that the poverty is not just from the natural standpoint, it's more spiritual than it is anything, okay? It's more spiritual than it is anything. I mean, there used to be a code amongst thieves, Oh, you understand? Being a thief was wrong, but there was a code. <laughs> does, does, does that make sense? <laughs> I mean, listen, even, even, the, even the boy sitting around the tree drinking all day had a cold. Okay. <laughs> but now there's, there's no boundaries. Lawlessness is, is, is taking place. Amen. Father, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We give you praise on tonight. Lord, you've been so gracious to us. I thank you for the understanding that is in the hearts of your people, God, the anointing that is upon their lives. I praise you, Father, that we're going forth, seeing your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, from city to city and state to state and nation to nation. I thank you, Father, that your kingdom has become a reality unto us, Father, and we will share those realities, God, and it will destroy yokes and lift heavy burdens and set captives free. I thank you, God, for uh, 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 our faith going to another level. I thank you for the gift of discernment, discerning of spirits, God, activated in our lives, Lord, and our focus and our consciousness of you increasing even the more. Father, we appreciate you for every place the steps of our feet has been uh, ordered to go and the places you have directed our lives, Lord God, and we will 
we will do your will in those places, God. We will magnify the Lord in those places, God. And I thank you for the harvest, the salvations, the healings, the deliverance, the reconciliation, God, the, the backslide of returning, Father. We bless you for all of these things, God, for it is harvest time. It is harvest time, and it's time for the saints doing the work of the ministry. We love you. We thank you. Bless the gifts on the night, God, the seeds that are being sown, returning of time the giving of offerings, Lord God, a hundredfold, and you're able to multiply that a thousand times as it is written in Deuteronomy 1 and 11, God, that there be no lack amongst us, Father, and that we will be able to, as a unit, as a church family, God, even assist one another, God, as our consistency and our giving, and God, the faithfulness of you watching over your word to perform, and God produces the harvest in our life as long as the earth remains. There is seed, time, and harvest. Thank you, God. Our heart has not waxed cold. We have not grown weary in our well doing concerning the economy of your kingdom, God, the economy of our lives, God, knowing, Father, you set principles in place. And we have not lost faith in your principles, God. We know that you are, your sufficiency is enough. And you are Jehovah Jireh. The God supplies every one of our needs according to your riches and glory. We will not lean to our own understanding. We will not lean to ourselves, Lord God. We will not, God, when we come to the fork and road, go back to what we knew, God, but we'll come into the place of learning what we need to know and experience. We appreciate you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.